Hi everyone, this is Scott from the old Curiosity Shop with probably, I guess, my third or fourth um, thrift haul. So I decided to get out of town, out of the city, head over to New Jersey to escape all of the uh, Super Bowl madness. I live in Center City, Philadelphia, um, right near City Hall, and um, not necessarily being a huge uh, football fan myself, uh, I'm glad the Eagles won, but I also knew the city was going to be crazy, so I got out of town, and I'm actually glad I did because I hit some cool thrift shops um, in Jersey that I don't usually go to or that I don't go to on a regular basis. And I just got there, sort of, you know how you get there and they just brought out the car from the back? And you look inside the shopping cart and you say, oh wow, is it, could it be? And you go over there and nobody else is sourcing, you're the only one. And you reach down and you pull out that awesome thing. Well, that's what it was like for me um, a couple of days ago at, this, at a couple of thrift shops uh, in Jersey. So let me show you what I got. Some of it's pretty typical run-of-the-mill, some of the other stuff is a little bit unusual, and um, I've got most of it already up for sale in my shop, the Curiosity Shop. First thing I saw when I went into this one Goodwill when they ro rolled out the cart was, yeah, baby, like the pay dirt of Pyrex. Um, not the most expensive, but not your average like five dollar fifteen dollar pyrex this is that amish uh, butter butter print butter something i don't i don't know as i said before I, i'm not a pyrex expert but i'm learning and it really pays to do your research because i know that this one sells so it's a set it was a set of four you see there's only three here uh, they're all numbered on the bottom i'm not going to go through it the 442, 440, anyway. So there's a blue one, a white one, and a blue one. Um, no chips, no cracks, very little utensil wear. Uh, they priced their Pyrex kind of high over there, but I was willing to pay for it because I knew that I could get a decent return on my money. Now, they did have all four bowls. This is only three. Uh, the fourth bowl, was white, white, the way this one is, but um, the blue decoration on it of these little Amish dudes and their little corn and their little rooster and all that, it was a it was gone. Like I don't know what they did with that little bowl, but somebody scrubbed it it clean. So I didn't buy it. Because the other ones are in such good shape, there's a little bit of loss on this one at the bottom, just a little bit. Uh, but the two blue ones are excellent, there's no loss at all, there's no scratches. So I thought, you know, if I buy the fourth one and try to sell all four, and the fourth one is like, the littlest bowl is really crappy, but the other three are excellent, I said no. I can always hold on to this, find the fourth one, or just sell the three. So I decided to just sell the three. Um, the three of these should sell. Um, you know, it's all over the place when you go online and look at what they have sold for. Uh, 50 to like 150. I mean, it's just, you never really know. So. Um, I didn't put a whole lot on them um, as a buy it. I did buy it now, but I also, no, I think I did auction. And I started it at $39.99, which is a good price for these three. Um, and I kind of will just let the market push them up as high as they'll go. Uh, so that's what I did with these. And these weren't that expensive. I think this was like five bucks, and then four bucks, and then three bucks. So I've got less than, got about $12 into three bowls. So hopefully they should sell for, you know, between $60 and $80. They might even do a little bit more than that. There are a lot of these on right now, but this is one of the Pyrex patterns that's really hot. And it's called the Cinderella uh, pattern, or bolt, the shape of the bowl is called Cinderella. I don't know why, but it is. 
This um, sold. I put this on yesterday, and I got an offer that I got an offer last night. And I already sold it. I paid four dollars for this. Now, I knew what it was. It's marked on the bottom. I feel like I'm shouting. It's marked on the bottom MMA, which on the tray or the saucer and the flower pot. MMA stands for Metropolitan Museum of Art. These were made by the Imperial Glass Company for the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Probably sold there in their gift shop or through catalogs. It's supposed to be reproductions of early American glass. This has a real 1930s look to it. Years ago when I first found this, I thought it was Acro Agate, which was a big ma maker of marbles. But they also made black flower pots in this kind of really thick, almost like slag glass. And uh, so it's not acro, acro agate, but it has that acro agate look to it. There are no chips on it. Amazing. All these little points here have no chips. This doesn't sell for a lot. As I said, I paid $3.99. I think I put it on for, for $19.99. And then I went back and forth with make an offer, make a counter offer, make an offer, make a counter offer. I sold it for about $13. So I made 10 bucks off of it. I was okay with that. An antique dealer many, many years ago gave me some advice. I don't remember who it was or I would give them credit, but they said, when, when, sell your mediocre stuff, you know, just sell it. But don't be afraid to hold on to your good stuff because you'll always get a good price for your good stuff. I'm not saying this isn't good stuff, um, it's not valuable. When I went online, I noticed that there are five others online. And the people are asking, you know, $69. Um, it's not going to sell for that. Uh, so I turned this around within hours. Uh, the money is back in my bank account. And I consider the $10 profit. I'm just going to consider that I take that off of the bill uh, of the other things that I paid that day. That's my kind of warped way of thinking about it. But anyway, if you see these really heavy, thick, uh, like uh, uh, slag glass, it's not Acro Agate, Imperial Glass Company, made in the 70s. I don't think stuff from the 70s is old, but anyway. Uh, yeah, man, Fire King, uh, Peach Luster Deviled Egg Plate. Now, I don't know about you, but... I grew up in the Methodist church attending Methodist covered dish dinners and I'm not going to tell you how long ago, but everybody in my hometown, I think every housewife in my hometown had one of these. Um, I was surprised. I, I, well, I paid two dollars for it and then I went online and I was really surprised that some people are paying like 20, 22 bucks for this. So Peach Luster, Fire King, Deviled Egg, Plate. Uh, I guess 1950s, 40s, 50s, peach luster. This is so cool. Uh, this is the Acme Rotary Mincer in the original really like Art Deco box. And what's cool is it's dated right here, 1935. And again, my camera doesn't always do so well, so I hope that's zooming in on it. 1935. Really cool to have a box. Um, and it's somewhat of an unusual piece. It's got a little bit of surface rust on it, which would come off easily. Uh, and it's some kind of a, I don't know what it does. It, well, it minces things. I'm not going to try to use it. Uh, but they have these, like, the directions on the back of the box. Oh, and I was surprised, very surprised, that it was $1 in 1935, 1936. That to me sounds expensive. I would have thought that this would have sold for like 29 cents or something like that during the depression. So uh, to pay a buck for this was a pretty decent amount to pay in, during the Great Depression. What's also funny about it is the directions on the back. Uh, they, I mean, it's this really detailed description of how you're supposed to use this thing. Um, 
You can mince parsley with it, cabbage, celery, onions, fruit. And, and it just goes on this, like, if you want to make your own chicken chow mein or salad, tenderizing steaks. And this utensil is especially valuable for preparing food for invalids. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. I don't know why that's funny to me, but because we don't really use that word a whole lot today, you know, an invalid. Uh, but that was a popular, I mean, that was used a lot in the 30s for an elderly person. It didn't have to be elderly, but just someone that was sickly, you know, an invalid. And it says right here how valuable this is for preparing foods, foods <laughs> for invalids. So maybe I should, ooh, I have it upside, maybe I should keep it, you know, I might be an invalid one day. So that was two bucks. I don't know what I'm going to, I forget what I put it on for. I don't get turned on, but I mean, I like the old stuff. This, but I keep reading about people finding these ink cartridges and like selling them. I bought four of these. I went out on a limb. I didn't stand there in the store on eBay trying to find out. I just said, let me get them. They were $3.99 each, new in the box, right? Ink, uh, or toners rather, for, for laser printers, I guess. I, I do see where they sell online, new in the box for anywhere from 19 to 23, 24 bucks. So I bought four of them for 3.99. It's easy to just list it as having four. They're easy to ship. I should be able to make 15 to 20 bucks off of each one. So I kind of went out on a limb, but they eventually will sell. I hope. I also got. Um, I'm not a huge fan of milk milk glass, but I did find six of these and six of these. Everybody will recognize, well maybe not everybody, uh, the classic Fire King shape of this mug. Uh, in Jadeite, they made them in Peach Luster, they made them in Delphite, which was their kind of turquoisey blue color, um, and they also made them in milk, in milk glass. This is prop. oh and they made them in uh, uh, ivory as well. This is probably the least desirable, but I was still shocked to find out that they pr a set of four of them or six of them can bring into the 20, 22, 25 dollar range. I was surprised at that, but I picked up six of these for 25 cents each, and they do say Fire King, uh, of course, on the bottom. It's always marked. This is also Anchor Hawking. Hadn't seen this before, and if you'll notice, this one is a real white milky milky milk glass. This one is a little cloudier, um, so, but both made by Anchor Hawking. This does not say Fire King. I think this is, was a 1960s uh, restaurant supply. Uh, I think these were mostly supplied to restaurants. It simply says on the bottom, Anchor Hawking, Anchor Wear. Anchor Hawking Anchor Wear, made in USA. So, uh, but they really have a cool 1960s shape to them, and I got six of these as well for 25 cents each. So, uh, yay milk glass. So these are all, all already online. Um, this is a, uh, uh, it's, you could say carnival glass. It's not, uh, it's 1920s or 30s. Um, I don't know which company made it. It doesn't look like Fenton to me, but there were so many companies that made it, made uh, carnival glass. I really like the colors in it. Um, it's not an extremely that it's not terribly valuable. Um, I might keep it because I, I really like these colors. And uh, right now I have thrown into the well. I have placed into this dish a collection of skeleton keys. See that? Can you see that? So like this sits out, because if candy were in it, I would walk by and eat candy. I would stuff candy in my fat face all day. So I have just a collection of skeleton keys in this dish. Um, I'm getting into linens. I don't, it's kind of a new area for me. I don't know a whole lot about linens, but I'm getting into it. Here are six, here are four napkins, four and four. Really, really clean, uh, starched, 1960s. I don't really feel like unfolding them, but you can see uh, that they have really cool 60s colors. This one, uh, this one does as well. And I don't know how popular 
cloth napkins are these days, but, uh, and these were very inexpensive as well. So I got those. Uh, this was funny, so I picked it up for like 50 cents. It's from 1943, and it's put out by the Popular Mechanics magazine. This is Popular Mechanics Handyman's Guide Home Kinks of 1943. So it basically is teaching you during the war years how you can repair things at home, fix things at home, because a lot of things were not available. You just couldn't go out and buy new tires for your car. You couldn't go out and buy a new coffee, electric coffee pot. Those factories were reconfigured for the war effort. So you had to make things last. Uh, so I love reading like vintage literature like this because it uh, teaches, teaches you so much about certain eras. Uh, I think my favorite thing is, or my least favorite thing, is right here on pa page 46. You see what that says? Make your own Venetian blinds? I don't think so. <laughs> I have enough trouble. You know how you try to, the string gets stuck and you're like pulling, you're pulling on it to try to get it and then you pull it and one side goes up. Make your own Venetian blinds. No, I got other things to do. Two more, three more things to show you. This is way cool. This was $10. And then it was 75% off all games. And they considered this a game. So this was like $250. And it's dated right on the front, 1965, by the Minnesota Mining and Manufacturing Company high bid the auction game. I can't wait to get my thrifting nerds together. I hope I can find some to play this. Uh, this is, I don't think it's ever been played. All the pieces are there, the instructions are there. Uh, and it's like you, see, this is so, it even, it smells like 1965. I was born in 1967, so um, this is only a couple years older than I am. Um, this is just so cool. Um, anybody interested in playing? Maybe we could have like a virtual, maybe I could get four of you thrifters out there and we could all like have a virtual game of, is it virtual? I don't know what it would be. But it's called High Bid the Auction Game from 1965. Two more things. This baby down here is was a stretch for me. Um, I almost didn't get it, but can you see how cool the graphics are on this box? This is a four quart electric ice cream freezer, ice cream maker, and it is dated 1963. This was purchased at Sears. It was sold by the Sears and Roebuck Company. Um, I love this box, and I'm not going to pull it out and show you everything. I'm not going to pull it out at all. But everything is in it, the instructions, um, and even the little, um, the little recipe book on how to use this machine and how to actually make your own ice cream. We had one of these when I was a kid. I remember it very well. you got to put your own rock, rock salt in it. But it's dated 1963, um, and sometimes I will go out on a limb, and something like this, you know, I might just put this crazy price, like, you know, $149, and just see what it does. Uh, there are others that are comparable to this that have sold around that. I did not find this one. It's in great condition, original box. It is electric. I plugged it in the motor works, so... Uh, what I might do, I might actually make some ice cream and then advertise it as uh, that it actually works. And you can make ice cream with it. This is the last thing that I got that I purchased and I've already done, um, I do a lot of electric light, antique lighting. It's one of my, one of the things I like a lot. Uh, in the 1920s uh, and 30s, uh, 
a lot of people had sun porches, breezeways, uh, side porches where they had their wicker furniture or their rattan furniture and there were always electric lights. Some of them were great big floor, great big floor lamps, others were table lamps. This is awesome. What I love about this the most is the finish on it. I don't know how well you can see, but it's yellow paint. It's never been repainted. It's the, you can tell it's the original old paint. It's, all, it's crackled up and sort of alligatored. Um, so it just has a really incredible finish. Uh, the shades, uh, this shade would not have been open like this. Uh, they almost always had fabric that was glued, that was attached to the inside. Um, it's rare to find one of these where the fabric survives. So you, a person could replace, could cut, take a piece of cloth and cut a, 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 and put a piece of fabric inside of it and that's how it would have been. I'm leaving it like this. Uh, I put uh, sort of reproduction antique Edison light bulbs in it. Uh, it's got two sockets. I rewired it. I always go and I get reproduction cloth cord, electric cord. That's what this is. Um, you can buy it online. Uh, there's an electric supply company um, on 8th Avenue in New York City that I, go up, that I go to all the time and I just buy a bunch of it when I go up there. I like to recycle the old fashioned sort of Art Deco uh, plugs. So it's been rewired with authentic silk covered uh, reproduction 1920s, 30s electric wire. This looks so cool when it's lit up. I'm going to sell it just like this take pictures of it with the antique Edison bulbs in it. There are two, two, it's a pull socket. Uh, and uh, this was 20, about $22. Um, I haven't decided yet what I'm gonna ask for it. I might put like uh, about 150 bucks and see what it does. Uh, it's just, what's, the, the finish is what is so cool about it, to find it with uh, the, that original, oops, that original old paint. Um, so that's what I had to show you for today. Um, yeah, um, I got uh, most of this stuff. This is about maybe maybe fifty dollars worth of stuff here. Um, I mean that I purchased. And since I already sold this guy and made a ten dollar profit, that's like forty bucks I've got. And I think I've got. If I can sell these things for the price that I'm hoping, I think I've got mm, $350, uh, $350 worth of stuff here. Between uh, the big ticket items like the ice cream maker, the old wicker lamp, and uh, Pirate's Bowls. So I um, had a fun time finding all this stuff. And um, my shop is up and running. It's called the Old Curiosity Shop. It is on eBay. I had a long, I've been selling on eBay for 18 years, but I, so I, uh, I thought a lot about Etsy, but I don't really know a whole lot about the site, and I figured I'll give eBay a try because I already have the account, and it was easy for me to just create my store and uh, start selling there, but um, I'm also looking into selling uh, on other sites like Cherish, which is good for furniture, um, and a lot of mid-century stuff. Uh, and maybe Amazon and maybe Etsy. I'm really just getting into trying to figure how to do all that. But that's it for now from Philadelphia. This is Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop. Thanks for watching everybody and um, did you like any of this stuff? What do you think? Let me know. Have a great night. Bye.